All right, everybody, I'm Mr. G. You probably know me from Channel 11 and the weather, and I also do special stories for Northwell of called The G Thing. And then I come out here and do special stories with Northwell, about Northwell, and we got one heck of a story uh, today. So your name is? Arman Mohammed. And you are? Parvin Yudin. And Parvin, what's the relationship? Yes, this is my son. My one and only son. One and only, right? Yes. Uh, he touched a chord because one of my favorite movies is The Karate Kid. So you're giving me that look. You can look at me. <laughs> so you are an expert or a, a green belt, blue belt, white belt? What belt? What belt, belt do you have? In karate, I, I'm a green belt. Yeah. And um, I've been practicing karate for three to four years. How old are you? Thirteen. So you've been practicing since you're eight or nine? Yes. I have uh, an award too. Uh, it's called the Yellow Streak. What, what is that? Well, it means I'm afraid, and it's right on my back. I, it's called the Yellow Yellow Streak. Uh, you kind of like famous now. I saw you on television. Yes. And tell me, what was all that stuff about? So recently I had a spine surgery about a year ago. After I recovered, right. I felt better. I wanted to do karate. Uh, this surgery was a high risk of paralysis. So um, during this- You mean it could have gone really bad? Yes, it, it could have gone really bad. What was wrong with you? Uh, my spine was crushing my nerves, which was, um, which was making me hard, which was making it hard for me to walk making it um, for me to hold on to things while walking. I couldn't probably even walk from here to there. How scared were you? I wasn't scared at all. Why is that? Because I wanted to get this done and over with. I mean, uh, gotta just get this done. Okay, so you're not a scared guy, and let's talk to mom for a second, because she went through this. Mom, when did you know something was wrong? Uh, when he was about nine or 10. Uh, he started complaining about his back and he started to fall when he used to walk and lose balance and the pain was severe. I went to his pedi uh, pediatrician, his pediatrician referred me to an orthopedic and from there I met Dr. Sawari because right. he specializes in this. I know, I know that you're a, a, a kind of humble guy and uh, can you recall what happened when you made him, when you first met him on uh, when he walked into the office? What was? Yeah, so I think it was September of 2021. He was sent to me by another orthopedic surgeon in my practice. I mean, he had actually seen two other orthopedic surgeons, and as they started investigating the MRIs and all, they realized how bad the situation was. So there in walks this young kid and with mom kind of a thing and we start talking and I start looking at his x-rays they actually were kind of hiding what was really happening because this was all about the nerves the bone were crushing it but it's in an area where you really cannot see it well so the MRI really showed us when I saw the MRI I'm like Jesus that is a bad spine uh, can you show us uh, sure. on the model so this is how his spine looks like you have a big spine, holy cow. <laughs> oh, gee, and Normally, this is how the spine should be. In his case, it is lost this. So now you can see if that is a spinal cord, it is being stretched badly. And as the bone is kind of being stretched, not only are you developing a deformity, the nerves are now being crushed. And the nerves are supplying your legs, and over a period of time, he started getting wobbly, he started losing balance, and of course, karate. What causes was this? He was born with this, so it's a rare condition. Actually, if I recall, mom, uh, when mother, uh, mom, when mom went for her ultrasound, uh, prenatal ultrasound, they had suspected something, but it was they did not tell her the details and stuff like that. But over a period of time, with growth and all, slowly and slowly, slowly and slowly, the deformity just worsened. When, when. Uh did they tell you anything at that time? The doctor said that they suspected something. Yes, they did say there's some deformity in his back spine, 
but my pregnancy was healthy, I gave birth on time, he was a little underweight, um, that's because, I don't know why he was underweight, maybe because You of weren't eating diet. food, what happened, you were on a I diet eating. when... I, uh, was, I wasn't eating. I have no idea. <laughs> of course you don't. <laughs> now, uh, tell me, uh, how did you present uh, the operation to uh, Pavan and, and Aman? Well, so my, in my practice, I've been doing this for 20 years, and one thing I've learned is, is you talk to mom, but you really talk to the child. Smart. Yeah, and you treat them like adults. Like So I showed them what was going on, uh, and pictures are worth a thousand words. So when I show them a crushing spine and the nerves are under tension, they start realizing what the problem was. Uh, but then I said, hey, go, go home, think about it, and these, there are risks and complications. Uh, you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. If you don't uh, get this done, paralysis is almost guaranteed. I just can't tell you it'll be five days or five months or five years. But if you do it, you at least have a 50 to 60 percent chance that you'll be fine. The more you wait, the more So uh, let me ask you a question. That operation was like t 10 hours? Yeah. I, I always wondered about this. How do you focus for 10 hours? I mean, this is a lot of energy, right? Yeah, you, I mean, it's something that you work uh, over a period of time, you train yourself, and then with the experience, it's, just, it's like driving a car. Yeah. Now, I always say this, right, when I'm in the middle of the night, if I'm on call, and somebody calls me, hey, there's a fracture that needs to be fixed, or something emergency that has come in, initially when you're getting out of the bed, you're kind of a little bit, oh my God, but when you hit the road, well, you're focused, you're not thinking about anything else, your eyes on the road, you're re reaching there, and then you operate. How did you know by the way, if, this, if the surgery went well, is it just the results that you see with time or can you tell right afterwards? You can tell right away. So during the whole surgery, this is a very big surgery, there's a risk of paralysis. At the time of surgery, we are watching his nerves in real time. So after he goes to sleep, and after, all my kids after they go to sleep, we attach a computer to the brain. A neurologist is sending signals from the brain down the legs. We pick it up in the fingers and toes. As long as of all the three signals that we're watching, there's basically a guarantee he will wake up fine. So you know that he's going to wake up fine when the signals are fine. That means he's not paralyzed, and then it's just a matter of recovery, essentially. Uh, yeah. When I went back to the recovery room, I thought he was going to be out from all this anesthesia. And I, I hear someone praying, and I said, that's my son's voice. Alhamdulillah, <laughs> Uh, we're Muslim, so he was praying in Islam, and I kept saying, how could that be my son? He should be knocked out from all this anesthesia, but he was calling God, and I think um, that was, the, I was very sensitive at that time, you know, it was just very sad and miracle, like I said. Did you remember this, praying? Yes, I remember praying, exactly. Um, I was calling God, I was uh, uh, reciting surahs in Arabic which is um, uh, a verse from the Quran, in, which I memorized as a kid. When did you know you were getting better? What was the first sign for you? When my uh, toes stopped feeling like I was stepping on pins and needles, which it was feeling like that for like a little while, for like a week or two, finally healed and I felt so much better I could start walking. And, and, and then within um, around um, April, I tried, like, you know, within two months, I tried doing punches, I tried doing kicks. What was it about this doctor inside of five minutes that registered in, inside of you? What feeling did you get? Oh, um, I couldn't make the decision of the surgery, but my son was the brave one. He said, Mom, let's just do it and get it over with, and I just want to get back, I want to walk, I want to kick, I want to go back into karate, I want to go out with my friends, ride my bicycle, and I... So you learned something from your boy. Oh yeah, yeah. Life is about taking a chance, and miracle can happen, and it did. Thanks to Dr. Suahi, all did happen, you know, um, he actually was the one who saved me, so, you know, he was the one who performed the surgery, thanks to, you know, him, the whole team. Thank to everybody who helped out. Um, Karate Kid is one of my favorite movies. Yes. It's one of my favorite movies because the master is what I think you're supposed to find in life. 
somebody who makes it easier, somebody who teaches you, somebody who cares about you, somebody who loves you, somebody who makes the whole thing work, right? That's what I believe the Karate Kid was trying to teach me, right? What did your mother and your doctor teach you? Both combined, what did they teach you? Ah, uh, that's a hard question. That's what I ask. Tough questions, all right? Tough questions. That's right. I, all right, I'll make it easier, okay? Right. Do you like it better being a celebrity or a patient? Celebrity. Why? Because there's so many cameras. <laughs> and you want to... I know you met a big celebrity, Ralph <laughs> Mudd. Machio, and I'm very curious about this. So after the success, you go to City Field, you read with the Karate Kid. What was he like, and how was the? Uh, how did it happen at City Field when when you saw him? When I met Ralph Machio, I was so shocked. I he was such a nice guy. I really loved him and his family. They're very kind people. Um, Thanks to Ralph, um, you know, I, it's been, it's really nice to see him, to see his family, and, you know, it was very an honor to meet him. Let me ask you a question. What's it like meeting me? It's an, it's an honor. Now, the, uh, Ralph, much, I was so surprised. It's like, now you're down to a weatherman. Listen, listen, everybody, we're all the same, no matter how much money you have in life, no matter how famous you are, we are all the same. And thank, you know, um, one quote I've uh, learned as a kid, um, no matter what, we all die, we're all going to be buried into the same ground, we all have the same color of blood, so no matter what, we're all the same. So I'm going to just say something to you that I learned from my mentor, right, which is somebody who was a higher thinker and was my professor who took an interest in me. The talent that you have right now, never betray it. Nobody can ever take it away. You are a gifted, gifted child. And no matter what comes your way in your life, stay loyal to yourself. Never betray yourself. Do you like that? Yes. Um, I, I don't... Um, there's some people who are gifted in this world. I don't believe I'm gifted because it's, it's more of hard work and what you've been through in your life than talent and gifted. Um, I believe it's more... And being gifted, it just... You're just... Oh, I got you. It's great. It's great. It's perseverance. It's keep moving yes, forward. Yes, it's, it's, it's your mentality the way you are. And what do you want to be when you're older? Um, a UFC fighter, hopefully. Um, you know, we, we can all change our minds. Who knows? I mean, I can change my mind. Well, wait, wait a minute. You told me you want to be a surgeon. Orthopedic There's many. I could I could have many things. So like you know, orthopedic surgeon. Me. I. But the thing I really want the most is to become a UFC fighter, because martial arts is something that I prefer a lot. Because you're you gonna know, check in with any doctors uh, before you become a UFC fighter. Yes, definitely. I'm going to be with Doctor Swai, and Doctor Swai better be there when I win my UFC championship. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah, he will be there when oh. you win the championship. Yes. How about me? Can I come to the to, to the arena? Of course. Everyone could come. So, uh, anyone. so let me get this straight. You want to be a doctor, you want to be a UFC fighter, you want to do an operation, then fight somebody so they need an operation, <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then you want to go back to being a UFC fighter. Well, listen, being a UFC fighter needs to have good hands. So um, surgeons have good hands, and, you know, they have a good, strong grip. Yeah. If, if hey, you, hey, you, hey, is there any question that you don't answer correctly? <laughs> Maybe the ones in algebra or math. <laughs> and, and that's when you and and Maybe. that's when you get a stomachache and can't go to school, right? Yeah. <laughs> right before the test, right? Um, no, not really. Are you going to keep in touch with your doctor as you grow? Of course, all my life. If so. Yeah. So he goes to me, Mom, when I move to Dubai, he has a dream of living in Dubai. How am I going to see Dr. Sawari? I said, well, either you have to fly here or you have to fly Dr. Sawari, either one. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. You call all of your patients your kids. Oh, yeah. 
What's that about? Well, I mean, you know, that's, that's how I see them, right? I have kids his age, essentially, so as a parent, you understand that. And that's one of the assurance I give to my uh, patients and, and the family that, hey, that's my kid on the table, and I'll take care of him as same way as I would for my own child. You want to ask me any questions? Take the mic. Well, first, I want to ask the doctor the question. Oh, okay. oh, the God. question I've been dying to ask. Oh. When am I going to take wrestling? When can I take wrestling? Well, six months from now. Six months? Well, I have to check your bo bones have healed uh, properly and completely, right? Okay. Your bones have to be rock solid before you go breaking other people's bones. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Wait, wait, wait. You're smiling away. He said six months. You said six months. Now you're smiling. What are you really going to do? I'm going to, I'm really happy because I thought this would be like years. But when I hear six months, six months is going to go by fast. Trust me. This year when, uh, yesterday I felt like I was praying on that bed to God. Now I'm, now I'm here practicing karate. Give mom the microphone. Our, our mom, you know, six months can become six years if your mom is not. Right. Yeah, so mom. don't don't chew my ears when I get when I go home about the six months. You yep. have to listen to Dr. Sawari. All right. Um, after all this, I just have to thank Dr. Sawari. Um, he's uh, Armand's mentor in a way. He wants to be an orthopedic surgeon when oh, he grows wow. up. Happy now yeah. MMP, MM, UFC, e UFC. UFC. You're, you're amazing. Thank you. What a treat. What a treat.